Right. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me OK. Um, it, if, if there are any audio problems, I am going to record this session as well and uh, make it available to everybody either later today or, or tomorrow. But hopefully everybody can hear me uh, and see my screen. So my name is Spencer Allingham, and I'm one of the senior solution engineers at Conducive Technologies. And today I'd like to introduce you to our Velocity software that you can use to speed up your SQL servers and other Windows workloads as well without having to reboot machines and without any SQL code changes being required. Um, now, as we go through, uh, if you think of any uh, questions that you'd like me to uh, answer in a Q&A session at the end, feel free to use the questions box in the GoToMeeting um, or go to webinar window, uh, pop them in there and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them all at the end. And also in the handouts section, I've put a, a few files available for, for download. There's a, a Velocity data sheet in there, uh, gives some very useful uh, concise product information and a, a few case studies as well. So <laughs> if you fancy a little like bedtime reading uh, later, feel free to download those as well as we go through. All right, let's get started. So to illustrate why you might want to consider downloading and installing the Velocity software onto your SQL servers, I ran some lab tests using HammerDB uh, to generate an online transaction processing type workload with and without Velocity installed. Firstly, using SSD storage, and then using spinning disk storage. And as you can see from the metrics recorded by HammerDB, over SSD storage, there was about a 30% improvement in the number of SQL transactions that could be processed per minute. And this was backed up by Windows Perfmon metrics that showed a 28% improvement in the number of transactions processed per second. When running the tests again using spinning hard drive storage, there was around 100% improvement. Now, either way, this is great news for SQL DBAs who care about the performance of the databases that underpin their business critical applications. Whether you're running SQL in a, a physical or a virtualized environment, most SQL DBAs would welcome faster storage at a reasonable price. Conducive's Velocity software is designed to provide exactly that, but using the storage hardware that you already own. It doesn't matter if you have direct attached disks, if you're running a tiered SAN, have a tray of SSD storage, or are fortunate enough to have an all flash array, that storage layer can be a limiting factor to your SQL database's productivity. The Velocity software reduces the amount of storage I.O. traffic that has to go out and be processed by the disk storage layer. And it streamlines or optimizes the data which does still have to go out to disk, so, so it becomes more efficient. The net result is that SQL can get more transactions completed in the same amount of time, quite simply because on average, it's not having to wait so much on the storage before being able to get on with its next transaction. Velocity can be downloaded and installed without any disruption whatsoever to live SQL servers. No SQL code changes are required and no reboots. Just simply install and typically you'll start seeing results in just a few minutes. Now, before we take a more in-depth look at that, I would like to briefly mention that just recently, the Velocity software was awarded the Microsoft SQL Server IO Reliability Certification, which is quite a mouthful. <laughs> but basically, this means that whilst providing faster storage access, Velocity didn't adversely affect the required and recommended behaviors that an IO subsystem must provide for SQL as defined by Microsoft themselves. Now, most SQL DBAs are familiar with why split pages are bad for performance. If you've got room and your update or insert doesn't require a split, this is pretty fast because SQL is just updating one page and then writing it out to disk and of course to the transaction log. But if the updated or inserted row doesn't fit, SQL needs to allocate a new page, move about half of the rows to the new page, and then write 
both pages to disk and to the transaction log. In addition, the pages in all the indexes that point to the data pages, well, they need to be updated too. So let's say as an example that your table had one clustered index and four non-clustered indexes, that would mean at least seven pages would need to be updated. You'd have one for the clustered index structure, four for the non-clustered indexes, and two in the data pages in the clustered index. So this page split would result in a minimum of seven times the I.O. as an insert or update that didn't require a page split. Now, each I.O. that takes place takes a measurable amount of time and resource to process. And the same is true when the Windows file system splits up data as it writes out to the logical NTFS volume, and that can have significant performance ramifications too. This is why DBAs basically format volumes to be used by SQL with a 64 kilobyte cluster size, rather than just leaving the default of four kilobytes. It helps to avoid split I.O. situations when writing to disk, and it keeps performance robbing file fragmentation from building up so quickly. But it doesn't completely fix the problem, though. As your NTFS file systems mature over time and files get created, extended and deleted, the free space on those NTFS volumes will become more and more fragmented into smaller and smaller free space extents, increasing those split I.O. situations as you're writing out data. Each time your write is split in this way, the data is being sent out to the disk storage layer in a separate I.O. packet. And just like split pages in SQL, each I.O. takes a measurable amount of time and resource to process. In the real world, a gigabyte of storage I.O. traffic that should be written in about 2,000 or 3,000 I.O.s could now be taking 30,000 or 40,000 I.O.s to complete. And we call the performance penalty that these split I.O. situations cause the Windows I.O. tax, as in a tax on your performance due to the split I.O.s. Now, in a virtualized environment, this performance penalty can be amplified by something called the I.O. blender effect. And what's happening here is that you have small fractured I.O. packets coming from the virtual machines. And as they get funneled through the hypervisor, the hypervisor mixes these I.O. streams together, causing a randomization effect. So what comes out between the physical host hypervisor and the disk storage controller is really now a chaotic mess of small, fractured, and now very randomized I.O. streams that by the time they hit the storage controller, couldn't be less storage friendly. It means that the storage controller is only receiving data in very small packets at a time, so it now only has the opportunity to create very small stripes across its media, and that means many more storage level operations than if the data hadn't been split as it was being written all the way up at that NTFS layer. So I hope that makes sense. Now, the Velocity software helps Windows avoid or prevent most of the excess, unnecessary, performance losing split I.O. traffic. And it replaces that with far fewer storage I.O. packets, each one carrying a larger payload of data. And this makes the movement of data between server and storage quite simply more efficient, much like avoiding page splits wherever possible. And it allows the disk storage to store the data using far fewer storage level operations and in a much more sequential and efficient manner. Velocity will also help create those nice large free space extents quietly and automatically in the background using only otherwise idle compute resources to make it easier for the Windows write driver to write into. So think for a moment of a busy freeway or motorway at rush hour. Imagine that you've got lots of cars sitting bumper to bumper with one person in each car and none of them are getting anywhere very quickly. Um, I know not everybody's in the UK or, or around London, which, which is close to where I live, but around that we have the M25, which <laughs> anybody who's driven on that will know exactly what I mean. I'm sure you have a similar road where you are as well. Um, so 
what Velocity is basically doing to that big traffic jam is taking all of the people out of the cars and putting them into buses or coaches and removing all of the cars from the motorway and getting rid of all of that congestion so that now all of the people or your data can now flow to their destination in a much more efficient manner. <laughs> I hope that makes sense as an analogy. Um, but really, that's only half of the story. Velocity also introduces a RAM caching technique into the Windows operating system that further reduces the read IO traffic that the backend storage has to deal with. The performance benefits provided are in addition to SQL's own buffering and any caching natively provided by the Windows OS. Um, and really, this is how we could get 30% more SQL transactions done in the same amount of time during that testing that I mentioned before. Quite simply, SQL could get more work done in the same amount of time because it wasn't having to wait so much on the disk storage layer before being able to get on with its next transaction. And frankly, because RAM is faster than disk storage. Oh, and it absolutely works with both physical and virtualized SQL servers. And also if you've got SQL running in the cloud as well. Storage IO reduction, optimization, and RAM caching represent a significant reduction in workload that has to be processed by the backend storage. This is not only true of SQL Server storage traffic, but other workload types too. So in this example on the screen, let's say that the first VM is hosting SQL, and the second is hosting the application that interfaces with SQL, and the other two VMs are hosting busy file servers. Now, they're all sharing that same backend storage. You might have a situation where the traffic from the, from the file servers are taxing the performance of SQL simply by keeping the storage layer busy. So SQL isn't necessarily the cause of the disk storage being slow, but it could be affected by the increased disk IO queue depths and latency caused by the busy workloads on the file servers. My recommendation, therefore, would be to install the Velocity software on all the Windows machines sharing that same backend storage. That way, from the point of view of the storage, it's now simply doing the least amount of work, regardless of which virtual machine is generating the most workload at any given time. Now, at this point, some of you might be thinking, ah, yes, but. SQL is already using most of the available memory in the machine. How can you possibly create a RAM cache? Now, it's true that if SQL is left uncapped, often there won't be enough RAM for conducive software to create a cache with. We've intentionally designed our software so that it can't compete for system resources with anything else that's running so that we can never be the cause of a memory starvation situation. Velocity would only use some of the free RAM that isn't being used by anything else, and it will dynamically size its cache, handing RAM back to Windows if other processes or applications need it. So for best results, it's very easy to cap the amount of RAM that SQL takes for itself, for its own caching or, or buffering. On busy database servers, if you can leave 16 gigabytes of RAM free, you'd have a velocity cache size that would be enough to really make that machine's performance fly in most cases. And if you can't spare 16 gig, leave 8 gig free. And if you can't afford 8 gig, leave 4 gig free. Even that is enough to make a difference. But if you go much smaller than that, the cache size would really become too small and any performance improvements would become limited. And you might also be thinking, well, actually, SQL's buffering is good enough. So how does Velocity's caching complement this? And at a basic level, SQL's caching or buffering does do a pretty good job. And whilst that does have a positive impact on performance, Velocity's RAM caching is designed to eliminate the type of storage I.O. traffic that tends to slow the storage down the most. And whilst that tends to be the smaller, more random read IO traffic, it's not always the case. So Velocity uses a very lightweight storage filter driver to gather telemetry on the workloads that you're running. And this allows the software to learn useful things like 
what are the main applications in use on a machine? What type of files are being accessed and what type of storage IO streams are being generated? And at what times of the day, the week, the month, the quarter? So it can become very intelligent about what the hot blocks of data are that need to be in the RAM cache and more importantly, when. And it can also use that telemetry to figure out how best to size the storage IO packets to give the main applications the best performance. And then of course, if the way you use that machine changes over time, Velocity will automatically adapt to those changes without you having to reconfigure or tweak any settings. It really is a, a set it and forget it type product. Now, validating results is really easy. Um, first of all, you could measure the amount of SQL transactions being done each day to see if they increase. Some customers see reports that they generate take less time to produce or SQL imports take less time batch jobs complete more quickly, that sort of thing. Some customers have even done a simple stopwatch test to measure record retrieval times. And you know they can actually measure the difference with a, a, a manual stopwatch, which is pretty cool. But Velocity itself comes with very transparent reporting that will show you exactly how much storage IO traffic it's able to eliminate from the disk storage layer. You can see what percentage of the reads and writes are being eliminated and it will show you how much storage time is being saved or freed up by the storage not having to process that eliminated I.O. Oops, I've gone a bit farther. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, if you're using thin provision storage in your virtual machines, Velocity can help you reclaim space. If you're using thin provision VMDK files, for example, in, in VMware, it can automatically zero out the free space for you so that you don't have to wait for hours for an SDLink pass to complete. And if you're thin provisioning down at the storage layer, it can also send SCSI unmap commands down to the storage controller and say, hey, storage controller, these blocks are no longer needed. You can add them back to the available pool. That also works with vVaults in, uh, in VMware as well, which is quite handy. And if your virtual machines are, provi are provisioned with dynamically allocated RAM, instead of a fixed amount of RAM, such that the hypervisor can borrow some back to reallocate to some other virtual machine, it is important to make sure that you reserve enough RAM in your SQL VMs configuration for both SQL and velocity. Otherwise, too much RAM in the VM could become driver locked by the hypervisor's ballooning driver. And that would mean that velocity might not get enough RAM to cache with effectively. I think most people though, do tend to allocate a fixed amount of RAM to certainly important SQL machines. That, that really makes sense and is, is good best practice. So here are some, just some of the case studies really that you can access on our website at conducive.com. As an example, uh, on the bottom left here, we've got Bell Mobility. They're a, a telecoms company in Canada, and they saw the Velocity software reduce the storage IO traffic to their SAN by 61%. I mean, that's a huge reduction in, in workload. This gave them SQL report queries that were three times faster. With no additional hardware being required, all they had to do was just simply install the software, which as I mentioned earlier, is completely non-disruptive. There are no SQL code changes required, no reboots required, and zero disruption to live running workloads, and of course the users. ASL marketing in the middle, they saw their SQL batch imports drop from 27 hours to just 12 hours. That's a 15 hour reduction just simply by installing the Velocity software. Suncoke Energy, they saw Velocity reduce the storage IO traffic that had to go out to their storage array by 53%. That gave them faster data transfers and increased throughput on their Oracle workloads. Now, I know that this is a SQL focused webinar, but actually Velocity isn't just for SQL. It can be installed on any Windows computer to provide storage IO reduction, optimization and increased performance. Finally, it's worth noting that Christus Health on the top left were able to cancel 
a $2 million SAN replacement simply because Velocity gave them back all of the performance they needed after they virtualized. That saved them money on storage hardware upgrades. And, you know, that sort of thing can really put a smile on <laughs> even the most hardened finance director's face. And it could free up very useful budget that you could then use elsewhere. Now, an easy way to tell if your Windows servers would benefit from the Velocity software or not is to use our free IO assessment tool. And we're going to send a download link to this to everyone who registered for the webinar. And this can be used easily to monitor your workloads to search for and highlight performance bottlenecks. And it will indicate the potential for improvement with the Velocity software. And for a limited time, if you email us a copy of your IO assessment tool report, we can have one of your engineers, maybe even me, <laughs> step through this with you to provide additional analysis that's even more tailored to your specific IT environment and current needs. I like to think of this really as an IO bottleneck finder, because that's really what the tool is. You may already have some other performance monitoring tool, but this is a little different as it's not showing real time data. In fact, what this tool is doing is simply collecting and aggregating the system performance data that's already sitting in your Windows systems, whether they're virtual machines or physical servers. You don't have to install anything on the live servers, just simply install on one machine that can see those computers that you want to monitor on the network. Oh, and of course, no reboots are required. Most people run the tool for a day or two, and at the end, the tool analyzes that data and puts in front of you a very easy to read report that shows you everything that the tool uncovered. So you can find out do you have storage IO issues or bottlenecks on your systems? And if yes, what the issues are, where they're occurring, and at what time of the day. And it gives you a handy way to simply get empirical evidence on whether you have IO issues in your environment or not. After the IO assessment tool finishes running, as you can see, we list all the servers that have been measured and we color code them depending on how badly they're being impacted by storage performance issues. Red systems are being critically impacted, yellow systems are being moderately impacted and green systems are running just fine. And the tool is unique in that it has one measurement that as far as I know, nobody else does. And this measures the IO blender effect. This is where you have those storage IOs coming from multiple VMs at the same time, passing through the hypervisor onto the storage. And where you have them coming at the same time, that can cause conflicts and waits. This will measure that and tell you how much the IO blender effect is affecting your environment and particular machines therein. So Firstly, I would encourage you to share what you've learned in this session with colleagues. See what they have to say about this. So some of them may already be using the software in, in, on some of their machines. If your organization would benefit from faster data transfer rates using the storage hardware that you already own, I would urge you to just simply give us a try. You're not going to disrupt any live running workloads. You don't have to make any SQL code changes. And really finding out for certain will take no more than a few minutes to set up. Use our software to not only identify those servers that cause storage IO issues and bottlenecks, but let us help you make those issues go away so you get greater productivity and a greater workload capacity using that IT infrastructure that you already own. So, I hope this has been interesting um, and I do appreciate your time. I know everybody here is, is probably extremely busy, so I, I am grateful for your time. Let's see if any questions have come through about the Velocity software itself or the IO assessment tool that I mentioned. Um, let's have a look here. Okay. So Simon says, is it just for 
Windows or do you also have this for Linux machines? Well, I'm afraid, Simon, it is just for Windows machines. We don't have uh, this technology for Linux um, as of today. It is something that's on the long-term roadmap, though, I believe, but I don't know when that's going to be released to the public. Um, let's see if any other questions have come through. Actually, I think from the look of it, that is the only question that's come through. So hopefully that means that I've done a reasonable job of explaining this rather than uh, putting everybody to sleep. <laughs> um, I'll, uh, I'll end off here. Um, just quickly remind you that you, you can still access those handouts that I put in the uh, go to webinar window. You've got the um, data sheet for velocity, which gives you a, a good high level overview of what the software is, what it does, why you might want to install it. Um, and there's a few case studies there as well. So feel free to, to grab those quickly now if you if you want to get them. Please do feel free to share your results with us. We will really appreciate the opportunity to help you identify any performance issues and get them resolved. That's our raison d'etre. That's that's why we're here. We're, you know, obviously we do want to sell software, but more than that, we really want to help our customers get the most performance and workload capacity out of their machines. That's really what drives us a conducive. So please do feel free to, to reach out if we can be of any help with testing, reviewing test results, Anything you need, just give us a shout, let us know, and we'll make sure you get assigned an engineer to help you with that. So with that being said, thank you everybody again for your time. I really do appreciate it. Have a very good rest of day. You take care. Thanks.